Isoelectric focusing or IEF, what is it, how does it work and why is it important? That is what we will be looking at today. Isoelectric focusing or IEF is the first step into the gel electrophoresis. This is a method that sort proteins based on their isoelectric point. In other words, the pH where the substance has no charge. In addition to this, it also sorts them based on their molecular mass. So first it sorts them based on their isoelectric point and then based on their molecular mass. This is where the two dimensional part in the 2D gel electrophoresis name comes from. More simply put, this is a way for us to differentiate between different proteins based on the net charge of the different amino acids that they consist of. That's the isoelectric focusing part of 2D gel electrophoresis. To set up the isoelectric focusing step, we need to create a pH gradient as well as a difference in electric potential across this gradient. This means that we need a low pH or acidic environment in one end of the gel and a high pH or basic environment in the other end of the gel. Then we need to connect both these ends to a voltage source. When isoelectric focusing is performed, proteins separate from each other as they migrate through the pH gradient in response to applied voltage. The proteins stop moving when they reach the pH value that matches their isoelectric point. In other words, when their net charge becomes neutral. This means that all the subcharges due to the amino acids cancel out each other. Therefore, each protein is sorted based on its specific charge, which is the result of its specific composition of amino acids. Now that is already the main things you need to know about isoelectric focusing, but I also want to show you why these proteins move at all through the pH gradient in response to the applied voltage. First consider the general structure of an amino acid. For our purposes we will examine the two functional groups, i.e. the amino group and the carboxyl group. The amino group is a proton H plus acceptor and when it gets a proton it becomes positive. The carboxyl group on the other hand is a proton donor, making it negative when it gives away a proton. Now remember that in a low pH environment there is a lot of free floating protons, meaning that the amino group can easily get one. On the other hand, in a high pH environment there is a lot of free floating hydroxide, this is OH-, meaning that the carboxyl group can easily give a proton away. This means that at a low pH the amino acid is positive and at a high pH it is negative. So as you can see this is where the main movement comes from in response to the voltage apply across the pH gradient. Then further individual differences in the specific isoelectric point of each amino acid occurs as a result of differences in functional groups in the side or R chains. So that is the basic idea, but if you want to know more about isoelectric points, this is what I will cover in the next video, which you can check out here. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it up to the mighty YouTube algorithm and you can check that out here. Until next time.